Uh, dear students, you are welcome to another lesson. My name is Moses Wanchiri. And what we are going to discuss today is alcohol abuse. And our objectives today are as follows. By the end of this session, you are expected to be able to define alcohol abuse. You are also expected to be able to describe the causes of alcohol abuse, describe the disorders due to alcohol abuse, then describe the effects of alcohol on the body, and then describe the screening of alcoholism, and then you are also expected to be able to describe the management and prevention of alcoholism. Now, as you could be aware, alcohol is one of the uh, most widely abused psychoactive substance in the world. Actually, it is one of the common psychoactive substances. And as we could have said earlier, a psychoactive substance is one that when introduced in the body or ingested, produces desirable changes to the user emotionally, cognitively, and then it, could, it could also uh, makes behavior uh, changes in the person who is using the substance. And now, alcohol abuse, which is sometimes referred to as alcoholism, is when a person takes alcohol excessively to the extent that his mental, physical, and sexual well-being is adversely affected. And therefore, alcoholism, which is also sometimes referred to as addiction or alcohol dependence, is a very serious problem. Yeah. And it can cause very adverse effects if it is not what? If it is not uh, treated or handled early enough. Now, the sufferers who abuse a lot of alcohol or people who use uh, alcohol without control usually have the following. They are physically dependent and psychologically dependent or addicted to alcohol then they take obtaining and using alcohol as something of priority or great importance and at the same time they experience with the symptoms in the case they, 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 they stop using the drug. Now, what causes alcoholism? There are several factors that lead to the causation of the act of alcoholism, and some of them are biological, others are environmental, some are social, and others are psychological. Some of the biological factors are that it is implicated that this alcoholism uh, may run in family, in families, and it may have a genetic predisposition Although there is no direct gene that is implicated, uh, the, uh, the literature has it that biological factors, particularly genetic and physiological, may influence somebody from uh, or to, to, to take alcohol. Some people uh, may have uh, a feeling of pleasure more than others when they take alcohol and therefore they are induced, they are predisposed to using alcohol more than others. And this one could be genetic, genetically predisposed. Then there are other factors that are environmental. Some of the environmental factors are, especially if somebody works in a liquor industry or an alcohol producing industry, or where it is sold, people like barmaids, hotel workers, employees in the liquor industry, tourism, and maybe travel salesmen, uh, traveling salesmen, may have plenty of alcohol around them, and they may 
consider drinking as something that is not really a problem. And therefore, they consider uh, alcohol as something that is available and is uh, up to them to decide whether to use or not. And in most cases, they take on to using the alcohol. Then, advertisement, excessive advertisement, which looks like, uh, makes alcohol to look like it is something acceptable. And in most cases, they advertise with very nice language. They get uh, people who are icons in society to advertise. They get good musicians. They get beautiful people and people who are uh, who have made uh, their their names in society to advertise the what the drug and therefore it looks like alcohol is acceptable or it is associated to people who are aware of. Then they take alcohol as if it is fun, or they use it just for relaxation to pass time. And then there are also some other factors that are social. Attitude, one of them being attitude of the community. There are some communities which take alcohol as something that is acceptable, and if somebody drinks, it is intolerable. Yeah? They do not take it like it is something that is intolerable, but they take it as something that is acceptable in that society. Some cultures actually use uh, alcoholic drinks to initiate children into the clan. Then it is sometimes also uh, encouraged by certain religious sects. Then in families, there are families that do not consider drinking as a problem, and therefore children are exposed to alcohol early. And therefore, they, they, when they continue drinking it when they become adults, it is just a continuation from where they started when they were children, when they were taking it with their parents. Then there is also uh, the work that may influence the behavior of drinking. Sometimes uh, what the person does or what the person believes in and with the people he works with may be the people who influence him into drinking alcohol then relationship with peers who are actually uh, uh, drinkers of alcohol then they take sometimes alcohol as a normal way of life because everybody does so then psychological factors may include people with high stress people with anxiety those people who have them may just take alcohol to drown painful emotions. Then those people who are having underlying psychiatric problems which are not really diagnosed and therefore treated, people like those ones having depression, some people having schizophrenia, may be hearing voices, but when they drink a little bit, the voices reduce, so they take a drinking as a solution. And that underlying psychiatric problem may take them into a, a, a drinking spree. Then we have a feeling of relief from pain and hardships. Uh, that is some, those are some of the psychological factors that may uh, induce somebody to, uh, social factors that may induce somebody to taking alcohol. Then we have uh, disorders due to alcohol abuse as in our uh, third objective. There are several disorders that are due to alcohol abuse. And some of these disorders come uh, uh, due to intoxication and others later as the person uses the alcohol. And one of the disorders we are going to discuss is the acute alcohol intoxication, which is sometimes referred to as Acute drunkardiness, and this is a transient disorder that uh, results from drinking large amounts of alcohol just in a very short time, and therefore it leads to disturbance of consciousness, it is disturbance of perception, disturbance of the, uh, the cognition, loss of muscle coordination, and sometimes social inhibition. A person may not uh, really fall or conform to the norms of society. And then we have another 
uh, disorder which is harmful use. Harmful use refers to the pattern of drinking uh, that comes even when the person is aware that continues to drink, even when he's aware that the alcohol he's using is actually causing uh, harm to his body. And this harm to the body may include uh, liver damage, and then he may have alcohol-induced depressive episodes, then even the obvious one, which is interpersonal conflict. So the person continues to use alcohol even when he is aware that the alcohol is causing problems, and that is the harmful use. Then another disorder is the uh, alcohol dependence syndrome. This is a strong and overpowering desire to take alcohol most of the time. And the person with the alcohol dependence syndrome becomes therefore addicted to alcohol. Then they find it extremely difficult or even impossible to resist the desire to take in the alcohol because their body now is addicted and now dependent on alcohol. And that is alcohol dependency syndrome. Then we have some alcohol-induced psychotic disorders. And these are disorders which come as a complication of alcohol dependency. And some of them are, one, alcohol hallucinosis. This is when a person develops uh, 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 conditions that are characterized with the uh, 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 auditory hallucinations. And these auditory hallucinations are the type which are vivid. And in most cases, they are in the form of insulting auditory hallucinations. They are those that are demeaning. They are those that are humiliating. And sometimes they are threatening voices that in most cases continuously annoy or distress the patient. In this case, when the person is having uh, the alcohol hallucinosis, there is no altering uh, or uh, clouding of consciousness. And the person who actually experiences the hallucinosis is aware that the voices are not real. But again, he may desire, he, he, he may describe them as they are uh, as be, not being real, but then they are irritating and he goes ahead even to go around to seek for help, even when he is aware that they are not real. So that is the alcohol hallucinosis. Then we have the alcoholic jealousy. Alcoholic jealousy sometimes, the one which is referred to as pathological jealousy. This is a condition which uh, usually makes the, uh, the, 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 the sufferer to believe that the spouse is having affairs with another person and therefore having sexual affairs with another person. This occurs when there is no clear evidence or even there is no reasonable argument, nothing to support a, 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 an argument that really this kind of uh, situation is occurring. This kind of situation is common among alcoholic men. And you know, alcohol increases sexual urge, but again, it reduces sexual performance. So these men are always thinking, maybe these people, are, the, the, the wives, are going somewhere else to satisfy their sexual needs because these people are unable to to do uh, to give enough sexual satisfaction to their spouses, and therefore they develop uh, what we call pathological jealousy or alcoholic jealousy. Then we have alcoholic paranoia. This is when uh, the, the, the 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 person using alcohol develops a chronic psychotic condition where it is dominated by futures of systematized delusions of persecution or even grandeur or grandiste, the grandeur. The person believes that because of him being better than others, and those very people want to persecute him. So he believes like he's being hunted or they are planning to hurt him. Then there is also alcoholic or alcohol-induced amnesic syndrome. This is a condition 
where there is impairment of memory. So in these people, they tend to lose their memory and this condition is referred to as the Kauf's, uh, the Kauf's, Kauf's psychosis and this one is characterized by confabulation. In fact, confabulation is filling in memory gaps. Maybe people with this kind of condition, for example, a person may go and he drinks from a certain bar and then he fails even to walk back home and then he collapses along the road. Then probably information reaches home that he has collapsed and then they come and carry him home up to the bed. And in the morning, he starts filling in memory gaps. You people, I came and knocked and knocked, but nobody could, could not open. Eh? You really laid me at the door. And yet, actually, he was just carried from the roadside home. That is alcohol, uh, alcohol induced amnesic syndrome. Then we have also uh, pathological intoxication. Pathological intoxication sometimes is also uh, referred to as pathologic uh, drunkardiness, or in earlier times they used to call it mania apo too. This is when a person is actually allergic to alcohol. He takes very small doses and these small doses may uh, cause episodes of psychotic behavior which may be characterized by aggressiveness, over talkativeness, uh, irritability or irrational embarrassing behavior sometimes which is criminal uh, behavior that may be criminal and then violence and sometimes even attempts to rape and these people with the, uh, pathologic intoxication sometimes conflict with the law and they end up being imprisoned and they end up sometimes being accused for behaving in particular ways that uh, don't conform with the norms of that society. Then we are now going to come to the effects of alcohol on the body. Now, alcohol almost affects all systems of the body. Alcohol affects almost all systems of the body. And probably we can just uh, mention a few of the effects that it gives to certain systems. So if we talk about the digestive and probably the endocrine system, heavy drinkers may feel gas uh, or bloating all the time in their uh, tummy or abdomen. They may have a feeling of fullness in the, the abdomen they may have diarrhea, they may have sometimes uh, pain while passing stu stool, they may have uh, peptic ulcers, sometimes they may have even uh, hemorrhoids which are due to dehydration and constipation. You know, whenever these people are drinking alcohol, they may not take in enough water. This one may lead to constipation. And therefore, when they go to the toilet and they have painful uh, uh, a stool, uh, passing of stool, they may end up with hemorrhoids. And sometimes because of the irritation of the alcohol in the stomach, they end up with the ulcers. They may also develop uh, pancreatitis. And this pancreatitis, remember, can lead to either hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia that results from poor insulin regulation because the pancreas has been uh, destroyed. Then we have these patients developing conditions like cancer of the mouth and throat or esophagus, colon and liver because of the persistent irritation and therefore inflammation of these uh, organs in the body. And then People who regularly drink alcohol, remember, they also sometimes, since alcohol is a gateway drug, they tend also to learn using other substances like tobacco. And this one gives them a risk of suffering from other cancers like cancer of the lungs. And then they may also end up with the hepatitis B, uh, hepatitis, not hepatitis B, I'm saying hepatitis, inflammation of the liver cells and then they they may lead to fibrosis of the liver and therefore liver cirrhosis 
Then in the saturated system, people may develop high blood pressure, irregular heartbeat. Uh, sometimes the heart gets difficulty in pumping blood through the body. The heart muscles become weak. The person may get stroke. And eventually, they may end up with a heart attack due to heart diseases, and thereafter, the heart may fail. The users of chronic users of alcohol may end up with sexual and reproductive health problems. For men, they may experience erectile dysfunction. For women, they may uh, get infertility. If they are pregnant, they may have premature delivery. They may have uh, uh, miscarriages. They may have stillbirth. And in other cases, uh, women who are not pregnant may end up with uh, 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 menstrual disorders. They may miss some menstruation periods in a certain month. Then if pregnant, the unborn baby may develop what we call the fetal alcoholic syndrome. And the fetal alcoholic syndrome leads to the newborn uh, having learning difficulties. Sometimes they may have long-standing health issues. The children who are born are alcoholic mothers may not be healthy, and therefore they might have a, a series of problems because they were not well, well if I can say, well built when they were still well in the mother's womb. So they have a series of problems. Then they have increasing emotional problems, I mean the children, and then physical development, uh, they may have uh, uh, physical development abnormalities. They may not physically develop as normal as they are expected. Then users of alcohol may have uh, skeletal problems, muscular skeletal problems. They may have weak bones and therefore even if they got a, a fracture, it may take so long to heal or the fracture may heal slowly. Their bone is being weak, they are predisposed to having fractures and they may have weak muscles, they may have cramps and eventually the muscles atrophy and we usually see this as if the patients are the users of alcohol or the alcoholics are uh, actually uh, wasting. Alcohol may also affect the brain. There may be direct brain damage that may occur, but the, 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 the damage may also be due to uh, nutritional problems and there could also be seizures. Seizures which are referred to as ram fits. And these ones occur in most cases when the person is having alcohol withdrawal. And then to the nervous system, these people may have slurred speech, uh, poor psychomotor coordination. Uh, they may have uh, problems uh, uh, due to the effect or the damage of the frontal lobe, which is actually uh, responsible for emotional control. And therefore, people who excessively use alcohol may have problems with emotional control. They may have problems with short-term memory, the judgment, and then uh, uh, they may also end up losing long-term memory. And then they also end up with what we call peripheral neuritis that can be uh, 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 showed by the person having numbness and then uh, tingling sensation in the feet and hands. Then the people who chronically use alcohol may end up with the, what we describe as the wanika koskov syndrome. We are going to describe this uh, just in a, a short while. Then the patients or users of alcohol may have also problems with their immune system. They are vulnerable to suffering most of the diseases that would otherwise be prevented or would, one would not have suffered if he was not taking alcohol. So they end up with the pneumonia, they may end up with the tuberculosis, they may end up with the cancers of the mouth, the breasts, and sometimes colon, and other diseases that may result because of lower immunity. Those ones that we are referring to as the opportunistic infections or opportunistic conditions. Then, 
Alcohol use deprives the body of a thiamine. And the thiamine deficiency is the one that almost leads to most of the complications that the people with alcohol suffer. And thiamine deficiency from the people who use alcohol is because of three reasons. One, poor nutrition, poor intake of the, 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 the foods that are containing thiamine, uh, that vitamin B. And another reason for thiamine deficiency may be because of the inflammation of the gut. If the gut is inflamed and then the GIT is inflamed, where after the absorption of this vitamin is supposed to take place, then the person may not make use of the food that he has eaten. And then the other problem may be because of uh, 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 the reduced uh, intake because of loss of appetite. And therefore we are having poor nutrition, poor nutrition that may be because of uh, the, the, the low appetite. Then we have the person having an inflammatory GIT and the absorption is poor. Then also there is excessive use of thiamine because of the a persistent intake of, of alcohol. So those three reasons lead to the people with uh, who are taking alcohol uh, get deprived of thiamine. Now, lack of thiamine increases the risk of the individual to suffer from a condition called the wanike koskovs syndrome, which I've mentioned earlier. And now, Wernicke's Encephalopathy, which is the initial stage of the uh, wernicke koskos syndrome, is a type of brain injury that is caused, that causes three main problems. Is a type of brain injury due to alcohol that causes three main problems. One is vision problems, two, confusion, and then the other one is difficulty or, or, or difficulty to walk. So there is that brain injury. Then the condition that follows the Koskov syndrome is that one that is of memorial loss, which is usually affects the day-to-day -day tasks. So the first, it is the Wernicke's encephalopathy, which is the brain injury. And then the next that comes is the Koskov syndrome. So, when it has encephalopathy and Koskov psychosis, therefore, are acute and chronic phases of the same condition. So, the person begins with the Wernicke's encephalopathy and then ends up with the Wernicke's, uh, the, the Koskov psychosis. So, the Wernicke's uh, encephalopathy and the Koskov psychosis relate to each other in the following way, with the following ways. When it has encephalopathy often occurs before Koskov syndrome. The injury to the brain occurs before the memory loss. That is. And then, as the Koskov syndrome increases, which is the second one, the Wernicke's uh, encephalopathy tends to decrease, which means there, as it progresses, the initial stages tend to lose their domination of the presence in the uh, symptom of this uh, wernicke koskov syndrome. And then, if a person successfully re receives treatment for Wernicke's encephalopathy, then Kovskov syndrome will not develop. Therefore, the Wernicke's Kovskov syndrome is a progressive uh, syndrome that comes from the Wernicke's encephalopathy, and then it comes to Kovskov syndrome or Kovskov psychosis. There and therefore, we call it the Wernicke's 
Koskov's syndrome. Now, an individual with Wernicke's uh, uh, encephalopathy may experience confusion, altered mental state, jacket or involuntary eye movements. He may have uh, drop upper eyelids. Eh? The eyelids tend to drop over the eye even when they are intended to be up when a person is alert. Then there is a, a double vision. Then poor balance and difficult to walk, therefore. So without treatment, when it has encephalopathy, might progress to coma, and it can be fatal in some people. So that is some, uh, those are some of the complications of uh, alcoholism to the body. And now, how do we screen for alcoholism? You know very well that not all people who drink alcohol usually get addicted. Not all people who drink alcohol usually get what we are calling uh, they are abusing alcohol or they are not alcoholics. But then how do we assess or screen that this person now is having a condition, alcoholism. When we are screening, uh, screening alcoholism, we use uh, an acronym called CAGE. And CAGE is uh, uh, having four letters, if we can see here, CAGE. And, oh, unfortunately it may not be seen. But otherwise it is C A G. E. If I can come here, C A G E. And the C stands for cut down. And maybe the question we can use here when you're asking the patient or the person who consumes alcohol Have you ever felt you need to cut down on your drinking? In case the person says yes, we consider that one. As positive. If a person is drinking alcohol daily and in great amounts, and then he probably he decided one time that I should maybe stop or even reduce. If he has ever thought of that, then we consider that one as positive. Then for the air, have people annoyed you by criticizing your drinking? Have you ever got annoyed when people tell you that? Ah, nowadays it looks like you are drinking more than usual. It looks like you are uh, over drinking and then you get annoyed. If a person has ever experienced that, then we consider that one positive. Then the third one is the G. And then the question is, have you ever felt guilty about drinking? Like you move to the bar and you are feeling guilty going there or you don't want people to see you drink and although you want to drink or you feel guilty because of the things that you do when you have got drunk so have you ever felt guilty about your drinking if a person says yes then we consider that positive and then the fourth one is have you ever needed a drink first thing in the morning hmm? in order to steady your nerves uh, or to get rid of hangover. And that's what we are referring to as eye opener. So E is the eye opener. So have you ever thought of drinking something, some alcohol first thing in the morning in order to stable up your nerves or to kill the hangover? If the person says yes, then we consider that one positive. Now, this first one is cut down, this is annoyed, this is guilt, and this is eye opener. For a person to be considered an alcoholic needs to have two positive of the, the cage criteria. If he has two positive, then the person is considered to be having an alcohol uh, abuse disorder or considered to be having alcoholism and 
this one for women, in case he has only one, then the, uh, for women or for the female, it is considered to be what? To be alcoholism. So for men, two of them positive. For women, one of them positive. Alcohol withdrawal. Now, alcohol withdrawal is when a person has the blood having less content of the usual alcohol, the usual levels of alcohol. And now, you know very well that whenever a person consumes alcohol, after eight hours of consumption, there is a reduction of the alcohol blood levels. In, 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 the alcohol blood levels starts getting down, and then he starts getting withdrawal symptoms. And these withdrawal symptoms may worsen into a delirium that is considered uh, an emergency, which is delirium tremens. Delirium tremens. So symptoms of alcohol withdrawal include anxiety, nervousness, nausea, vomiting, it may, may have tremors, high blood pressure, the person may have irregular heartbeat, heavy sweating, and in most cases they may develop seizures, which are referred to as RAM fits. Sometimes the person having withdrawal may have hallucinations, and then the delirium tremens may come in. Such people may need to be treated as an emergency and a process called detoxification is carried out for such people. That one we shall discuss when we are dealing with delirium tremens. Now, how do we prevent alcohol-related problems? We prevent alcohol-related problems at three fronts. One, we have what we call primary prevention. Primary, primary prevention is when we tend to protect the society from beginning to use the alcohol. This one can be best done in schools and in the community. We health educate people about the dangers of alcohol. We inform them the benefits of not using alcohol and the effect of alcohol to the body. And then they will not, stop, will not start the drinking behavior. And then the second prevention is when we are having patients who are already using alcohol and alcohol may be they are at a harmful use or they are even dependent on alcohol and therefore we wean them off from alcohol and after weaning them off from the alcohol, we then ensure that they do not relapse to drinking alcohol. That is the secondary prevention. Now, the tertiary prevention is usually done in the community. And this one is uh, done by ensuring that people who once used the alcohol don't relapse to using alcohol again. And we also manage complications of alcoholism. And the complications of alcoholism, just like the causes where, which are physical, which are social, which are environmental and psychological, even the, 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 the complications of alcohol are similarly physical. There are those ones that are social, there are those ones that are psychological, and there are those ones that are environmental. The person neglects their environment. Sometimes they even sell their property for alcohol. So we tend to rehabilitate them on those four uh, fronts, four factors. The psychological rehabilitation, uh, physical rehabilitation, social, and then the environmental. Then, when managing people with alcoholism, these are some of the uh, things that we consider. One, we want to alleviate current physical and mental symptoms. When a person has used alcohol, we want to alleviate the current physical and mental symptoms. Then we want also to, uh, to do what we call detoxification. Detoxification is weaning off somebody from alcohol. Remember, if a person stops using alcohol abruptly when he has uh, been using it daily 
on uh, 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 and and in big quantities it is an emergency because the person gets with those symptoms and later may develop delirium tremens so we tend to do detoxification to win the uh, patients off the alcoholism or the alcohol that they are taking. Then the other thing we need to do is to educate the patient about the dangers of abusing alcohol and the dangers of alcohol dependency. We need to educate them while we are managing them. Then there is also need for counseling. We counsel the client uh, and get his concerns. And then we also make sure that we support them to have permanent, to achieve permanent abstinence from alcohol. Then at the same time, we mobilize social support to prevent a relapse. You know, preventing a relapse requires really uh, a lot of social support, which we must really uh, uh, mobilize, such that the person, after weaning off himself from alcohol, we do not want them to relapse into alcoholism. So ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our session. And as you could be aware, we described, uh, we defined alcoholism or alcohol abuse or uh, alcohol de dependence. We also uh, described the causes of uh, alcoholism. We also talked about the disorders due to alcoholism. We described the alcohol, uh, 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 alcohol effects on the body. Then we also described the screening for alcoholism and then we ended up with the management and the prevention of alcoholism. So, as usual, we are going to have an assignment. We want you to describe the detoxification of a person with alcoholism. Describe the detoxification of a person who has alcoholism just detoxification and then you will be required to write it in one page and just write alcoholism you write your name and student number and then you describe in one page you describe the detoxification of a person who has had alcoholism Thank you very much uh, until we meet again in another session.